Hello, friends of Annoyed Kitten. I hope you are all enjoying the signs of spring that is starting to show around us. Up here in the north, it is taking its time, and I'm not sure we have seen the end of winter yet, but I am hoping. And so is my cat Skorpan, that is sunbathing every day, the sun is out. In my new series of videos about the Old Norse gods and creatures, I decided that my next video will be about the creation of the world, because there is a lot to unpack here. It is a strange myth for modern ears, but actually there are several creation myths from both India and Iran that are very similar to this one. The story, according to Snorris Edda, goes that before there was gods and a world, there was a huge, vast emptiness of nothing. We can call this the Old Norse version of chaos. In the south, there was Musbeilheim, a world of flames and fire protected by the giant Surt that sits at its border with a flaming sword. In the north, there was Niflheim, a world of frost and freezing temperatures. Where the hot flames of Muspelheim and the icy waters of Niflheim crashed together in the vast emptiness between them, Ginnung Agap, a giant named Ymer and a cow named Adhumla appeared. Ymer fed on the ever-flowing milk from Adhumla, and while he did, Adhumla licked the stones made from salt. Some seems Ymer as an androgistic being, both male and female, and that's why he could create life. Some sees him as a male creature that can create life of his own. Regardless of creating, he did, and that's how the giants got created. Umer's left leg made a child with his right leg, and there was also a man and a woman being born by growing out of the sweat of his armpit. These creatures was the giants. But then a new type of creature was created by being licked out of a salt stone by Adhumla the cow. This was Bure, a name that means sun, and he got a son named Bor, which also means sun. Now, neither Bure and Bor are the same as giants. Bure was not created by Ymer, but by Adhumla and the salt stone, therefore he represents a new family. With what female or being he got his son Bor with is not mentioned, but Bor in his turn married a giantess called Bestla from the Ymer giant family, and they got three sons, Odin, Vile, and Ve. Here, where the two different creatures is meeting and creating sons, is where things really start to happen. Odin, Vile, and Ve then slays Ymer. This is also a very common part of many ancient mythology about gods and the world's creation. The younger generation rebels against the older one, and then create the world after their own liking. And so happens here in the Old North myth, where Ymer is slayed by the three brothers Odin, Ville and Ve. And they create the world out of Ymer's body. Ymer's leg get turned into mountains, his blood turned into the sea, the rivers and the lakes, and his flesh into the soil. Ymer's skull was raised up to create the heaven, and his eyebrows turned into heavy clouds. So the world started with a killing. This gives us a bit of insight in how the Vikings might have viewed their cosmology the creation, the evolution, and also eventually fate of the world. It started with violence, so of course it is logical that it might also be ending in the same way. This also gives us an explanation for the hatred and conflicts between gods and giants that other myths tells us. The giants have something to get vengeance for. The gods killed their father. This conflict is going like a red thread through all the other myths where Thor seems to be the one that above all find it important to protect the world against the giant's anger and rage. Snorri is using medieval ideas about elements. He uses the heart and the cold of Muspelheim and Niflheim to clash. According to older poetry, this might not have been the case. Ginnung Agap might just have been a vast emptiness of nothing, and Muspelheim and Niflheim might be Snorri's own creations. But to go back to the myth, let's continue to follow the creation further via Völuspa, where the Völva is watching back into time in a vision, telling us about the creation of the world. The first thing the god did was to create time. They divided the time into day and night, evening, midday and afternoon, and the year into spring, summer, autumn and winter. For this they needed to create the sun and the moon. 
After that, they started to create the basic for culture. They made temples, altars and rituals. They thought that now everything was fine and dandy, so they gather at the yard to play games and just relax. But suddenly, three giantess comes, disrupting the peace. As the Volva is saying in the poem, Uns thrayar kvamu, thursa meyar, amatakar, mjök o Jotunheim. Till the leader came, up giant maidens three, huge of might, out of Jotunheim. It is disputed how to interpret this part of the myth. There has been some interpretations that these three giantess are actually the Norns, the three that later will be responsible for the destiny and death of both humans and gods. These three beings, Urd, Skald and Verdandi, are called giantess in some later verses in the Völuspa and seem to be of that old and powerful family. According to me, this theory would explain so much of why the gods seem to be interrupted and surprised to see these women. They thought that they were the only powers in the cosmos and here comes three giantess that has even greater power than them, that of faith and death. Margaret Clooney Ross have instead interpreted it as a gender conflict. Suddenly th- female powers is entering the male world and these three giantess are representing sexuality. The three women desire the gods, and as giantess, they are able to create life with the gods. And suddenly, another type of creation is possible than the male creation that had been so far. Also, we need to keep in mind that when gods and giants in the myth so far have created things together, their offspring killed off the old generation. These three women represent for the male gods that the men are not in total control. There are other powers at work. The male gods are scared of this. They want to keep their society based on male energy and order, so they reject the women. It is easy to here go into reading it as a fall of man, like what happens in the Bible. But this is not really that. It is more about how the man has to accept that there are other powers. And here we might also remember how important it was for the Viking society with families and families bond and creating alliances by marriage and children. In the Viking Age, mythology and religion, there is also a connection between men and order and culture, while women, on the other hand, is connected to both the wild nature forces and chaos. Again, this is not something particularly unique for the Old Norse religion, to connect men with culture and order and connect women with chaos and the wild forces of nature is something we see in many cultures, that we can see even in the Christianity. If we choose to spin further on that theme, it is possible to see this part of the creation myth as that there was only chaos at the beginning. The male gods brought order into the world, but without both order and chaos and a balance there between, there can be no life. These three giant women gives new possibility for the gods. And instead of the gods just being content and playing games, These giantess are the things that sparks more creation to happen. Because now the gods gather to hold a meeting and they decide to create more beings. They create the dwarves, another male being that actually doesn't have any possibility to reproduce themselves, since there are no dwarf women. Dwarves was a skilled craftsman, living underground or in caves, and they are the ones that created a lot of the weapons and magical things that the gods then came to own. A note here is that there is several verses in Völuspa that is naming all the dwarves, which doesn't happen with any other beings, but maybe that is because the dwarves can't reproduce themselves. There is a fixed number of dwarves. That is not the case with humans, and that is the next thing to be created. The creation of humans is not easily explained either, as with so many things in the Old Norse mythology, we are not given the whole story in the old poems. In Völuspa, it is said that Odin, Höder and Lodur is the ones finding humans at the brink of a river. Odin gives these beings a soul, Höner gives them sense, which is translated into the ability of awareness and being able to see right from wrong. Lodur gives them something called La, which has been translated into heath as well as lifeblood 
or actually a direct translation into Swedish would be life juice. Yeah, Nordic language can sometimes be very describing. And life juice is basically blood. And blood basically means life. Höner and Luder has also been debated. Snorre later calls them Bors sons. Does this mean that Höner and Luder are the same as Vilen V? Or are these other gods that the original audience of this poem knew about and therefore didn't need an explanation for? The word Luder or Luther has been interpreted as an old name for Loki. Snorri is no friend of Loki and portrays him in a rather bad light, but Loki was foster brother with Odin. So calling them Bors sons is no contradiction to Lodur being Loki. But again, we are left without any clear facts around this. Höner is an even more elusive character, and while he is described in the Poetic Edda as one of the gods that will survive Ragnarök, he is portrayed as a pretty simple and dumb character in the later Ynglinga saga, when he is sent by the Aesir to the Vanir as a war hostage after the war between the two groups of gods. Or do we again see the three women, the giantess and possibly the Norns, playing a part here? There are reasons for why some academics believe the giantess women might be involved, and that is because the number three have a feminine form, both in Codex Regis and Haug's book, two sources that are older than Völuspa and absolutely older than Ynglinga saga. The word used is thryar, which is a feminine form instead of thryr, which is the male form of the number three. Taking into account that these three Thursabrudir, aka giantess, are the Norns, we can see how these three women clearly could have something to do with the creation. There are also theories that the shape of the humans was actually created by the dwarfs. Since they could not reproduce themselves, they tried to create offspring in other ways instead. But the dwarfs could not give them soul and life and purpose. That was only for the gods to do. Both in Gilfaginning and in Völuspa, it is mentioned that the dwarves created humans' shapes out of wood or soil. There was Mutsugnir, the mightiest maid, of all the dwarves and Durin next. Many a likeness of man they made, the dwarves in the earth, as Durin said. So yeah, according to this text in Völuspa, at least the dwarves tried to make humans. And maybe they made a shape, but then the gods had to give them life. As the name for the first two humans, Ask and Embla, it is more easily to explain. Ask is the same word as the word for that sort of tree that Yggdrasil is, an ash, which makes totally sense. The man is created out of the same tree as the tree of all life. Embla's name is a bit more mysterious, but it might be meaning another type of tree, probably an elm. Their name's resemblance to Adam and Eve might not be so strange, since most of the text that names them, like Völuspa, can have been inspired by the Christian mythology. We have other hints of this in Völuspa when it comes to the world's ending, Ragnarök. Or the name's resemblance might just be a coincidence. Ask and Embla was not yet done, however. Odin, Höner and Lodur have given them life, a soul and their sons, but here we do have proof that the three Norns was involved. They are the one that finished the creation by giving the humans a destiny and a lifespan. Worth to note here is that this creation myth does not put any gender above the other. They are created on equal terms. There is also no fall of man as in the Abrahamic religions, and the humans are not driven away from any kind of paradise. They are created, they are given a life and a purpose and a lifespan, and that's pretty much that. So... That is the old North myth of how the world was created, and it pretty much ends with the creation of humans. It starts with violence, and it continues with a pretty violent story about the war between gods and the different gods' path to how their deeds and mistakes finally will cause the ending of the world, Ragnarök. I am tempted to jump right to Ragnarök in the next video, but I think that would be a mistake. Instead, I hope to instead cover a few gods in between so that the end of the world will be easier to understand. Next up is probably Odin, a god that has been with us almost as long as the giants, according to this myth. He is called Allfather by Snorre, 
But was he really some kind of king of the gods, or was he just one among them? That we will see in the next video. Until then, stay safe, keep your cats happy, and enjoy the spring as much as possible can.